Greetings and salutations to our fine podcast audience. Welcome to Three Peas in a Pod, episode 239. We made it. Yes, we did. We're still here. Still same day as last week. Yeah. Uh, so nothing has changed about the Braves' playoff chances. Nothing has changed about the month that we're in, which last month, or last week, we thought we were in the month We might be in October now. Maybe. Are we in October yet, Charlie, our producer? Because <laughs> it might be October 1st. Next week was, last week was next week. And next week, is week. <laughs> and this week is two weeks. Ed's just excited about getting into October because it's his birth month. <laughs> it's October first. Are you one of these people that Woo-hoo! celebrates your birthday? For well, a I just month? say this: the U.S. government does because as soon as it turns October one, I'm on Medicare. Oh, <laughs> <there you go. laughs> October one, and full circle. We're back to that conversation. I didn't know that. I thought I was going to be like the last day of the month, which is when my birthday is. Mm-hmm. But mm-mm, no, You're so excited. I am. I got my card already. Oh, so official. <laughs> it's red, white, and blue. If you didn't know, we will be getting ready that that Thursday, October third. We're uh, we're heading up to Canada. So yeah, our trip. That's it, my me, and my family's road trip. I'll be. What gone. y'all gonna do in the in the? In well, the we're going northernmost up. country. Yeah, we're going. They're gonna up. look for maple. Well, they're going to look for maple syrup. One of, kid, one of my kids. One of my kids told. Spring, I, I can't remember who they told. They told someone that we uh, we're moving to Canada. Oh, that's right, what they said. Yeah. We're going up to Canada because we're moving to Canada. So there you go. Because you hate the U.S. so bad. There are there are enough people that have heard me speak sermons that think I hate the U.S. that bad that I'd move to Canada. So we'll go on. Get out of here. That's what they. That's what they think. So. Uh, no, we're not moving to Canada. No, my girls, we've done enough cruises that we've learned what our girls like the most on trips are uh, pools. They like they like sleeping in hotels and they like swimming in pools. Turns out I can do that a lot cheaper just by going and getting... Ho- in Canada? Well, they like driving in the they car. They like riding in the car. He forgot oh, the third they thing. Like, they like, they riding, like in the car. riding in the car. So I said, well, we can do all we can do all those things. And they said, we'd like to go to, we'd like to, to drive somewhere. We've never been. My wife's never been more north than uh, D.C. So I said, well, let's go all the way up to Canada. We're going to go to Niagara Falls. Okay, fun. And then we're going to come back down the, uh, where I mean, we're. I hope you found a heated pool. Oh, yeah. All the pools are indoor pools. <laughs> They're all Okay, indoor. good. Almost all, all good. hotels now, I've noticed, have indoor pools. I'm that's guessing for that. That way reason. they can do it all year round. They can get yeah. it all year round. Mm-hmm. So and that anyway. way when you check in in the hotel, you can smell the chlorine. Yes. That's right. They want to smell it. So that covers up all well, the other right. smells. Right. All, exactly. the, all the other possible smells that are happening in that hotel have been covered up by the chlorine. So, I just realized that's we, the contrast between kids and old people. Mm-hmm. Old people hate riding in the car very yes. far. Yes. They don't like sleeping in no bed but the one in their house. And we're not crazy about pools either. No, we're not crazy. I like to stay dry. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm going to sit by the pool, but I ain't, I'm not getting in that. My well, wife and I love cruises, but our kids order peanut butter and jelly every night at the fancy restaurant. And I realized, you know, we could eat peanut butter and jelly for a lot cheaper. Oh, yeah. A lot cheaper than this cruise. The $8 so. peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. it was, so this was our, uh, it's, so we will be on the way. Well, I guess not on October 1st. We're mm-hmm. leaving Thursday morning. Of well, have a good trip. Pray, you know Enjoy what they should the pray, Canadian You know what they should be praying for? What? Travel and mercy. <gasps> oh, segue. Segue into the question. Segue. Nice work. job there, Nathan. There we go. So here's the question for today, and it is about traveling mercies to Canada. <laughs> You're gonna need a lot of mercy. Oh yeah, it's a long way. To get up there. So here's the question: I recently heard someone pray for traveling mercies. This bothers me. Oh, oh. Hmm. wow! It feels like saying if you pray for it, your travels will be safe. Uh. But I have loved ones who have been in terrible car accidents. Sorry to hear that. Can you help me reconcile this and understand why we say these types of prayers? It feels dangerous to me, but I know it's just me being cynical and struggling to understand prayer in general. Well, well just, welcome to the club. There you go. I, I'm struggling to understand prayer too. I was right with the person and then they go like it's a dangerous. I'm like, you hmm. think if you pray it and God thinks it's stupid, he's going like, well, all righty no, now, let me teach I, you a lesson. I think what they mean by dangerous is, what if I pray that for someone and then something bad happens? That what, what will that say about God? Got it. I think that's what they mean. All right. Mm, but I could okay. be wrong. Uh-huh. But so, okay. So, first of all, I have heard people who pray traveling mercies, but and I've always thought to myself, where'd that come from? And yeah. turns out we did a little researching. It don't come from the Bible. No, uh, not the phrase. Not that phrase. Not the phrase. The, the idea concept. that God will be with you wherever you go. Sure. That's in the Bible. That's in the Bible. Yeah. yeah. And there are people traveling in the Bible, mm-hmm. yeah. and oh, God was and God was with them it, yes. when that happened. Yes, but 
does that mean people who get into car accidents, I, God wasn't with I them? suspect somebody in the church in 1922 <laughs> started praying. They got terrified <laughs> of these new automobiles. I don't know what it was. We need some we traveling mercies. We need some traveling mercies. mercies. God intended for us to ride on horses, and now we've got yeah. these things so, right, frightening clear, the horses. I'll clear the deck by saying this. I would say if what you're asking is, should we pray for God, people to have safe travels and, you know, as they go on whatever journey they're going on, that God would be with them and bless them on that journey. Absolutely, 100%, yes, you can pray for that. There's yeah, nothing, wrong, there's with nothing that. wrong with that. If you understand that that's not a magic pill right. that's going to all of a sudden make their trip safe, just like anything else you pray for. I mean, should we pray for the sick? Absolutely. Yeah. But does that mean they'll get better? No, no. it doesn't. No. So I, I see this in the same vein. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm not trying to shut down your question, but yeah. I think it falls into the same category. See y'all next week. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that last part of it where you say, I'm struggling to understand prayer in general. I do think yes. the more that we understand mm -hmm. the purpose of prayer, and I think the, the, the hard part is, and I've said this in other places, I think we've all said this maybe, maybe on the podcast, I don't know, but most of the spiritual journey is unlearning things as much as it is learning what I need to learn. And what I mean by that is uh, whether you grew up in the church or not, we all have concepts of prayer, maybe culturally that we've picked up or even within the church, or maybe yeah. someone just directly taught you, mm -hmm. this is how prayer works. And if you do this, this will you know get God to do whatever you want to do. And a lot of understanding prayer is unlearning the stuff that God never said about prayer, but for mm. some reason we all have said about mm. prayer. And so if, if the one, God never tells us why we, why we should pray. Not that I can think of. There's he not, just says keep on doing it. He says keep on there. And there's a, there seems to be this assumption that people who have uh, relationships with God mm -hmm. uh, uh, interact with him through prayer. Yep. And there are instructions on how to do it and yep. where to do it and when to do it and what not to do when you're praying. There are those kind of, but there's never a time where God goes, oh, by the way, like, I've, I think I've said it on here before. I'm, I'm with a group of people right now reading through the Old Testament. And then after like, I don't know, 15 weeks, I think someone said, we finally made it to the end of the book of Genesis. And all over that is God interacting with people. And never once does he like give them you know, the red phone to the White House kind of thing of, oh, by the way, here's if you ever need to get in contact with here's me, formula. here's how to pray. Yeah. He And honestly, what we get a lot of is not any of them praying, mm -mm. but God just showing up and saying, I got something I need to say to you. You're not, you're not doing the right thing or this kind of thing. So all of that to say, understanding prayer in general is not something I even think that just happens. If I study the Bible long enough, I'll understand it. It seems like the way I understand prayer is I practice it. Yes. And if I practice it enough with the guidelines that I see in the scriptures of yes. this is how to do this, I kind of understand my relationship with, with God in the same way that if you ever had to sit down with a dating couple mm -hmm. and do premarital counseling mm -hmm. and you tell them, here's what marriage is going to look like and these are things you're going to need to do. You give them principles. There is no way you can tell them in a way that they understand what marriage is until they've been married a while. Yeah. And there's a way in which, so when you when you ask this, to me, should I pray for traveling mercies? Maybe not that phrase. But should I take any opportunity that comes up? Because mm -hmm. I'm assuming the reason you pray is maybe what you said. I've had loved ones who were in terrible car accidents. And maybe every time you get into the car, it makes you a little nervous when you're going on a long journey. Yeah. And you're thinking... You know, I wonder if something's going to happen. When when I was very young, we were in a pretty uh, terrible car accident that was in the rain. Now, anytime I drive with my kids and it's raining, and I wasn't the one driving, I was in the back of the vehicle. Every time I get, I can feel it. That's it's right. like, oh, this there's, is, there's, I'm, I'm in danger. There's your trauma response. And that's right. That's a, right. Yeah, it's it's my trigger. I have that's this right. little thing, and I feel it. My heart start, starts racing. My hands tighten on the wheel. My kids say something. I go, everyone be quiet. Yeah, I can't hear to drive. Because <laughs> I need to hear better. <laughs> Right. I do the same thing. Turn down the radio. Yeah, I turn down the radio. Everyone be quiet. So all of those things. Is it appropriate at that point that then I go, hey God, I know that I'm I am I am on edge right now, mm -hmm. which doesn't make me a better driver, mm -hmm. doesn't make me a better father in the car, mm -hmm. doesn't make me better able to respond to people in love. Can I trust that you're watching out for me? Mm -hmm. 
help me to trust that you're watching out and that no matter what happens, I'll be okay and give me peace in this. To me, that's an appropriate response. And can I become the type of person who through that place of prayer that you just described mm -hmm. can become the kind of person that uh, trusts that God is with me and that allow that to shape who I am in his world. And that's bringing the kingdom into that moment right yes, there. Yes, that's right. And so I've said this, I'll, I'll say it again. I preached on this just a few months ago. The purpose of prayer is not to get God to do what you want. The purpose mm -hmm. of prayer is to be properly formed. Mm -hmm. It is a forming uh, activity that mm -hmm. I participate in to allow God to do his work in and through me so that I can become the kind of person that can fully participate in the life he's living in this world. Well, and then there does seem to be, and I'd say on this other side of it, and I've, I've been reading one of Dallas's books on prayer recently um, as a little devotional thing every day. There seems to be, once I become the kind of person who is formed in his image, God does tend to participate in that prayer life in a different way. Oh, yeah. In a more powerful way, in the way that James would say the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective, that there's a way in which mm -hmm. when my will mm -hmm. looks like his will, mm -hmm. we start to align more on things. Mm -hmm. The problem is I am convinced always, well, my will would be God's will. I'm not praying mm -hmm. for anything bad. And it may not be that I'm praying for anything bad, but it may not be God's will in the moment. What happens though through a life of prayer is I become the kind of person who hears from God more. My, my heart starts to look more like his. Yep. And there are these people not... Facebook prayer warriors, but there are these people in every church, any pastor I know knows people in their church. They go, if I go and ask that person to pray, pray for me, there's something different. There's something different. We know there are people who Paul says have the gift of healing. That's sure. a part of this. And it seems to not be that they're just walking around touching people and they get healed. It seems to be a part of this prayer life that they have. That's all part of this formational thing. Yep. It's not to say that if I pray God's not going to do what I want. It's to say, it's an interactive relational thing. I had to say this to one of my daughters the other day. With, they came and told me something that they wanted me to do something about. Yeah. Every parent knows what this is like. I come, this is a problem and someone needs to handle it. And I said, okay, I'll think about it. And then their older sister came to me and said, no, this really is a problem. I said, oh, okay, I'll come deal with it. And they got mad. How come when she said it, you listened? And I just said, I trust her more than I trust you. <laughs> I know that she knows what I want in this situation. If she handles most situations, but when she comes to me and goes, dad, I know you wouldn't like this. Whereas one of my other daughters, and it's just because she's young. She's a great kid, but she's just young like all of us. She often likes to come and get dad. It's called tattletaling. Mm. I like to come and get dad involved in things and tell him only part of the truth so he comes and does what I want him to do, powers up on my other sister. But it's not actually what dad would have really wanted to do. But one of my, uh, but my, my older daughter often comes in and through time and our relationship, what I've learned is she knows my heart. Mm -hmm. She knows my will. And when she comes and tells me something, I am more inclined to go, oh, there's something going on there. I think this idea that we often have in prayer, and this has just been my experience, once again, and what I see in the scriptures, is that it is this formational tool to make me the kind of person, and the way Dallas would say it is, that me and my father could talk about what we're doing together. Yep. And so then when I'm talking, it doesn't mean that I can just make magic things happen anywhere I want. I now know the kind of things that I go, oh, my father wants to know about that. He wants, he wants to hear my, my thoughts on this kind of things. And the things I go, he goes, you know what? I know he's got that handle. He don't need to hear my thoughts. I'm just going to say, God, I trust you on this. And we got this thing going. But that, to me, takes time and practice and understanding. Well, it's like the other day, um, and you guys will remember this, in our discipleship uh, journey together in our mm -hmm. groups, um, we spent a week meditating on Matthew chapter seven, where Jesus says, uh, keep on knocking and you'll, yes. you know, whoever knocks, it, the door's open. He who asks, receives, and he who seeks, finds. Um, so keep on asking, keep on knocking, and keep on seeking. And I, 
I meditated on that probably three, four days last week, and I was yeah. sitting with Jesus in that. And and I will say, for most of my life, I read that that passage and thought, well, that means that I just keep on bugging God, right? And eventually, I'll get what I'm asking for because you know He's a good God and He want and if it's a good thing and all the things, I just got to keep going and and He'll eventually give in. Well, this time. I got something new, <laughs> and mm. and what the new thing was, it's not entirely new, but it hit me in, in a different way, was if I'm truly, like you just talked about, Nathan, being formed into the kind of person that God can trust and that my will starts to align more with His, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then as I start asking for the things that He told me to ask for, the yes. things found He's in the Lord. He's already told you what to He ask told me what to ask for. Yes. The things in the Lord's Prayer. Okay, let's just start there. That's the basic. All of those things that I, I was, and I was reading through that too, because I pray that almost every day. And I thought to myself, okay, there's coming a day when kingdom does come. Mm -hmm. Um, Then everything that God wants, God gets Mm -hmm. in the end. Um, I'm going to become a person that's going to spend the rest of my life asking for that. Yeah, that's right. Ple- yeah. Pleading for God for that to come. God, I want your will to be done. I want your name to be glorified and, and all that kind of stuff. I I can rest in the peace of knowing that that's a done deal. Mm-hmm. Now, did it happen today, tomorrow, next month, next year? No. But I know where I know where history is leading. Mm-hmm. And I know that that part has settled. And so I can now get into that flow and participate with God in the coming of that mm-hmm. and continue to pray for that until I take my last breath. And yeah, I'll keep on seeking. I'll keep on knocking. And that door is going to get opened. Mm-hmm. And and it just hit me in that way. I'm not saying that God doesn't answer prayers, that I pray specifically. Oh, course, yeah. That's not what I mean. I'm just, it, it, it was a different experience of that passage than I'd had before. Well, and, don't you think even in that where you're saying mm-hmm. like God answers mm-hmm. specific prayers, that's part of my learning too. Yeah. Because like if I don't know a person very well mm-hmm. and I ask them for something, and this this happens with my girls. They'll come to me and sometimes they'll go, Daddy, could we have extra ice cream today? And sometimes I say no. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes it lines up where I say yes. Mm-hmm. They start then and I watch their little brains. Mm-hmm. They start going, Why did he say yes today? Right. But he didn't say yes. Let's turn that key a little bit. Yeah, next and time. let me figure it out. And mm-hmm. their brains are trying now they often come to the wrong conclusion, as I have with God a lot of times. Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe it's because I said traveling mercies. <laughs> maybe that phrase unlocked yeah, something. Yeah. And then eventually I learned, oh that phrase actually had nothing to do with it. But that's through practice. Yeah. That's through understanding. Sometimes when I pray, my line, my will does line up with God's will. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, as even happens for Jesus, where Jesus goes, hey, I know your ultimate will is for me to go to the cross. Mm-hmm. This is your ultimate will. I'd like something different. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or, as I've even heard someone translate that, what he's really saying is, I'm afraid I'm not going to have the strength to even make it to the cross. That's right. Uh-huh. So mm-hmm. could, could you help me? Help when he me. says, my will, not yours be done, he goes, mm-hmm. And then what the next thing that happens, I think it's in Luke, it's not in, or maybe it's in Matthew. One of the two angels come and minister to him yeah, to right. help him be, to strengthen him mm-hmm. so he can go to the cross. It may be possible Jesus actually got his answer That's right. in that. But either way, it's about my will coming and aligning with God in such a way. But that comes through understanding this time he answered it in the way I wanted. Yeah. I think he answers sometimes. And the answer is, no, that's not going to happen this time. Mm-hmm. That's still an answer. It's just not the answer I wanted. Yeah. Or but, a, not yet. Or not yet. Yeah. Or and I'm yet. trying to, all of that to me is the relational part of it, which what that says to me and what it's what I'm really trying to learn these past few years of my life is, if it takes practice, I want to get a lot of practice. So if I'm nervous about going on a car ride, yeah, I should talk. I should talk to God about that. I've shared on here before. Even the sins I struggle with, what used to happen is I'd have a lustful thought about someone or I'd have a really like ugly, angry thought about someone and it would make me want to hide from God. Like, okay, oh, just, Mm -hmm. mm. and I'd go, let me just run away from that thought. And I was even taught when I was a younger man is just bounce your eyes and don't even think about women. Women don't (laughs) exist. Just get away from women. Mm. And to learn on the other side of things to go, no, what I need to start doing is even in that lustful thought, say, hey, God, here here was my desire in that moment. That's right. And I know you have another desire for me. Shape my heart. Help me care about this person that I've objectified or, you know, whatever whatever the particular thing is. But those are opportunities for me to go to God. And he's shaping my heart in that way. So my answer to this is, 
if you want to understand prayer in general, not that I understand prayer in general, but no. that I'm learning through practicing. Learning, yes. And through seeing his Christian, because you, you gave the example of we meditate on ask, seek, knock. Mm -hmm. But then today we read Luke 11 where he talks about the persistent yeah. um, prayer and he talks about the neighbor, you know, you come, right. yep. wouldn't you give it? And then he says that thing about, and if, you know, you who are evil, mm -hmm. you you if your kid asked for a fish, you wouldn't give him a snake, mm -hmm. right? You might not give him the fish, but you wouldn't give him something bad. And then his response is, and he doesn't say, and so if you ask, won't well, your heavenly father just give you whatever he asked for? He says, if you ask, how much more is he going to give you the Holy Spirit? Yeah. <laughs> Which it seems to be, in his mind, that's what we're all asking for. What wow. we're asking for is oh, more yeah. of God's spirit and presence. Yeah. Ain't he going to give you that every time yeah, you ask for it? That's a done deal. Mm -hmm. Which I found interesting because I had always, you know how you remember verses certain ways, mm -hmm. and I had finished it in my head. If you wouldn't give him a snake, God's only going to give you a good thing. Yeah, He's yeah, very he specific on he what he's going to give you is more of his spirit and presence, mm -hmm. which means when I go to God in prayer, that increases my connection with the spirit, which then all the stuff we've just said mm -hmm. forms me, shapes me, makes me more responsive. Mm -hmm. I Ultimately, that that's the only thing I know to do because yeah. is just keep practicing at it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to stay traveling. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, I, I appreciate the honesty of that question of saying, you know, I struggle to understand prayer. Yes, that's part of it. That I think that is the whole deal. Um, it People talk about wrestling in prayer. Mm. I think it's a very real thing. I think yes. it's, it, I think prayer, to an extent, is a struggle. It, not with God, necessarily. <laughs> it's a struggle with me. Yeah. You know, that's been my experience is, you know, that, you know, that struggle of, I mean, you just described it, Nathan, of being able to bring my whole self to him. Yeah. And be honest to God. I talked to the, I think I talked to you guys about this in a, maybe one of our staff meetings one time of the change that it, it, that I experienced when I started practicing emotional honesty in prayer. Mm -hmm. Instead of like what you described, performing, of, yeah, performing, or you know, I'm not going to talk to God about that, or right. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm trying to beat that part out of me, you know, so I'm, I'm not going to bring that, but just sitting with God and going, you already know this, but here's how I'm feeling right now, yeah, here's what I'm really struggling with, um, you know, when I'm really angry mm -hmm. <laughs> about some things that are going on in life, and sitting with God and just saying, okay, God, here's. Here's here's that anger. I know this is not what you your desire is for me, but I, you just got to know. You already know. There it is. Yeah, that's what this is. Now, will you help me with this? Um, then that that right there that lessens that struggle for mm -hmm. me, and rather than me trying to you know hide it or to fight it on my own or whatever, but to just lay that before him. That to me is when prayer actually does begin to quote unquote work. <laughs> yeah. So. That, that's, I think that's it for me. You all have said so many good things. I don't have a whole lot to, what, what has changed for me is that kind of honesty of what is it I'm working on with God. If I can mm -hmm. narrow my prayers down. So I'm not saying I don't pray for people that I care mm -hmm. about when they're sure. about to take trips. That's right. I'm not, I'll be honest with you. I very seldom do. I mean, I'm just going to be honest I, because I, I'm not in the car. <laughs> I don't have any. Yeah. I, and if you're I, not thinking of it regularly, it does not make sense mm -hmm. to me that that would be something that enters. Well, and I get, prayer life. I can see that people are very anxious about that kind of thing. I do wind up, like you said, because of the accident we had when I'm driving and it's raining. I, I generally am praying during the middle of that because there is an anxiety in me. Yeah. I'm asking God yeah. to help me. Uh, to trust that, you know, that's honestly, that's a one-time event. And all the times I've driven in the rain, that's a one-time event. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, to can, help me, yeah. to help me to trust, instead of counting on somehow that if I say words to God, mm -hmm. uh, I think for me, once I got beyond thinking there was a magic way to make God do something. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount says, don't be like the pagans who think from their much talking. Mm -hmm. And I don't think he means, he does talk about vain repetitions, but that was what they did. Yeah. 
there were other groups that would cut themselves to prove how right. you know devout they were, and all kinds of other things that can happen to to try to get God to notice me. And I think that's misunderstanding the character of God. But once once it came down to the Lord's Prayer kind of formula, which is not a formula, but just a pattern to follow of, Lord, I want your kingdom come. Mm -hmm. I need what I need for today. Mm -hmm. I just need what I need for today, which keeps me from getting too far off into the future. Yep. Which, Thankfully, I haven't lived any days where I've had to worry about bread. Yeah. But I do need energy. I do need wisdom. I do need a sense of calm sometimes. I need mm -hmm. you to help me figure out why I feel the way I feel sometimes. I, I do need help with all those kind of things. So that's what I am working on with God. Or if I'm going into a meeting and I don't know what, I'm working on that with God. But you said emotional honesty. I, that's the honesty for me is just, I try to narrow my prayers down for me personally to things I know God and I are working on together. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, which often I do pray for other people uh, mm -hmm. particularly people I love and care about yeah. mm -hmm. and ask him to bless them yeah. and help them, which I know he wants to do too, and to bring about the best for them. I rarely, uh, this is probably lack of faith. I rarely pray for specific outcomes, mm -hmm. uh, which is probably just a lack of faith on my part. That's not, I should, no, it's rare. I would say it's rare. I just don't pr pray for that that much. I trust that God knows what's best and, I'm just asking that it'd be a blessing to them and that I would do whatever I needed to do in those situations. Mm -hmm. I'm not as, probably not as good a prayer as other people. Well, <laughs> yeah, that, that may be it. That's a part of understanding and all of that kind of stuff. But well, you can look at that several different ways. I mean, as you are talking about it, you know, maybe one of the reasons, you know, you don't lean into outcomes is it could be a sign that, You've trusted God with the outcome. And sure. I've, I've well, we've talked about that on this podcast a lot. Is That's really what a, a lot of what faith comes down to is I release the outcomes to God. Right. And that's what true faith trust is. And so if that's what that is, then sure. Yeah, and I think know. it's I think just like we said, there's no formula for prayer. I think prayer is um, to some degree, I think there are well, let me just ask. to some degree, I think it's personality driven, just like any other conversation. So what I mean is what we need to lean into is different based on your personality. Yeah. I think my personality is I'm really trying. I, I just I just I just try to flow out any thought in my head because I live in such a way. All, and it probably does not seem this way for the amount of words I say. I really try to measure every word I'm saying so that people can't take it away. I don't want them I am to take it. I am very concerned with how people take what I say and what I do and what do they think of it. In prayer, I am trying really hard to never be concerned with how God may take things because I know, I mean, you talk about emotional honesty, even when I'm really angry, saying things that I know God doesn't agree with. You know, you see things in the, in the Psalms where it talks yeah. about bashing people's heads in and doing these things. There's a level that honestly that's helpful. You know, when I have conversations with my daughters about things, I want them to know you can be, uh, I often say, be ugly in your honesty with me. Mm -hmm. Like say things that you think if other people heard you say them, you would think mm -hmm. I'd be embarrassed. You know, and so when they're mad, they're just, sometimes they'll just say, I just wish I could have slammed her head against the wall. And I, as the dad, don't go, I need to report this to someone. This is because I know what she's saying. I know she. Because she didn't slam her head against What she's saying is, this is what's in my heart. And for me as the dad, it's important for them to go, hey, I hear that. And I felt that way about people before in my life. The important thing is that you did. You know, all that stuff. I need to have that with God. But it may be, for, for other personality types, it's more important for me to learn how to just trust and not try to control the outcomes. Because in my personality, you know, in, in your personality, it may be to say, Hey, what's more important for me to lean into at this point in my life is that God is a good father. I need to not try and control every outcome because that's been my thing. You know what I'm saying? So uh -huh. to have everyone's personality type to say, I come at prayer in a way of I'm trying to grow in his likeness, which is different for each, each one of us has different struggles and different well, things that is difficult for me. I to think the through. commonality among the three of us of what we just said is we're all trying to be honest with mm -hmm. God. And yes. The thing. And mm -hmm. 
that's why, you know, I try not to, if somebody comes and asks me to pray for them, I certainly pray for them. I try to do it right in the moment because the truth is, unless they're really a close brother or sister, yeah. I probably won't. I mean, I know this sounds bad. I probably won't think about it sure. mm-hmm. to do it. And I don't want to promise to do something I'm, I'm not. But, you know, people I really care about, they don't really have to ask me to pray for them. Yeah, you're already You know, on. I'm already, it's on my mind. So I'm talking to God about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that's what we're... Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I don't ever have the kind of thoughts of people. I hear people say this. I don't want to pray for patience because of what God may make me do. <laughs> well, that all, all you mean is you don't really want to be patient. That's right. Yeah. I, I just don't just say it. I don't really want to be patient because. And bring that to God, too. That's right. Yes. You should just say that. I don't want to be patient. Because mm-hmm. uh, if you really, I mean, why would you if you didn't want something to happen? Yeah. <laughs> you, nothing's going to happen until you do that. Anyway. And then that That's the. Right. the I know it's the joke prayer all the time that people bring up, but I think it was an honest prayer. Augustine saying, God, make me pure, but not today. Yeah. yeah. Of, of ultimately saying, I want to be, you know, sexual mm-hmm. purity was a big struggle for him and mm-hmm. him saying, mm-hmm. God, I do want to ultimately be pure, but today yeah. I'm not, that's not where I actually mm-hmm. want to be, but I know that's where I should want to be. All of those things mm-hmm. I think is us. Or the prayer is, God, I want to want this. Yes. <laughs> yes but I've right said now that. I don't. I've said that frequently of, God, I'm struggling to want what you want for me. Well, you know, that's a part of a uh, recovery journey is praying for the desire. I pray mm-hmm. for the desire to want, you know. Mm-hmm. Yes. So that's okay, too. I don't want this shit, but I pray for the desire to want it. Yes. Yeah, and I know that's the order. You have to change the desire in me before it's ever going to take root. So mm-hmm. hit me there first, mm-hmm. and I'll keep praying. What I, I said this to someone. They said, is it more important when someone asks you to pray for something that you can do to pray for it? Or to do it. And I said, what I found is people who genuinely care about something both pray things for it and do things about That's it. That's right. Mm-hmm. If you're praying about something over and over and you actually care about it and you're not just saying, oh, I feel guilty if I don't say these words, pray for my brother, pray for my sister, pray for this. If you genuinely go, God, please take care of this person. And then it occurs to you at some point, oh, I could take them a meal. You're probably going to go do that mm-hmm. thing. And if you're the kind of person who's going after doing those things, I, you just naturally think, oh, I should take that person a meal. Well, then pray before you do that. Like you're, do- mm-hmm. it's not an either or. Those those parts to me don't. That's not the part that makes sense to me. It makes sense that I would do these interior work and these exterior works, and allow God to be the one that's directing all of that. So, so we could probably talk for another thirty minutes <laughs> on prayer because it is it is a struggle to understand. Yeah, uh, but it is a process you enter into. So stay in it. Yes, and. Uh, that's that's better than the opposite. So, yeah. all right. So, we will be back next week with another question. We hope, um, but we'll see. I think we're currently out of questions. Are we? Okay. So, if so, you got more questions, send them on. Send one in, or you know, end this podcast. Great. Yeah, we'll end, we'll end it, and we'll. That's fine too. All right. See you guys. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.